Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC in the Babylon world, and today we're kicking off the first of a nine-part video series that we're calling The Mystery Demo tutorial series. That's right, through these nine videos, we're going to be building a demo together, step by step going in-depth each part of the way, but we're not going to tell you what it is that we're building until the very end. I hope you enjoy this for our first one. Let's go ahead and dive right on in. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up a new uh, browser tab and search for GPU Gems. If you're not familiar with these, uh, the GPU Gems is a fantastic set of articles from NVIDIA. Uh, they go through all kinds of amazing things that you can do with the GPU, from simulations to calculations, all kinds of amazing stuff. Highly encourage you to check it out. For us, for this first video, we're going to select Chapter 1, Effective Water Simulation from Physical Models. And specifically, let's scroll all the way down until we get to the Sum of Signs approximation. We'll keep scrolling a little bit until we start to see these four bullet points and equation number one. From here, let's dive in to actually building something together. Open up a brand new tab and type in NME, that stands for Node Material Editor, .babylonjs.com, and you'll be presented with a brand new Node Material Editor session. And what we're going to do together is actually go through and create a sine wave using this equation. Now, this may seem a little familiar to you if you follow along with the Babylon videos. We've done one like this in the past to show you how to use the Vertex shader. Uh, it's very similar for this first one, but we've added a few things that'll set us up for the future of this demo. So I hope you stick around and check this out. Let's start by taking these three nodes here and moving them apart because we're going to stick the equation basically in where this red or orange line is. Now, I'm actually going to want quite a bit of room so I'm going to zoom out quite a bit. I'm holding down Control, and then I'm clicking and dragging to multi-select, and then I'm just dragging that all the way out here. Let's go back to the GPU gems. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is actually create the four inputs or parameters that we can control to change the wave. Uh, those are the wavelength, that's the distance between the waves, uh, the amplitude, uh, the height of the waves, the speed that the waves travel, and then the direction that they're traveling. So we're going to go through and create those things first. Uh, so let's zoom in here. Now, the first bit that we want is wavelength. If we keep reading here, wavelength L relates to the frequency W, uh, which W equals 2 over L. So let's start here by going and grabbing two floats, not gloats. <laughs> I can type, I promise. Uh, we'll grab two floats, bring them in. First one is going to be 2. Now, this is never going to change. This is not something that we need to change in the future. So to help with the efficiency of this shader on the GPU, I can actually go to Type, and I can change that to a constant. Uh, and that'll actually help just the efficiency of how this is calculated on the GPU. Uh, for this float, I'm going to change this to Wavelength. And then I'll give it an initial value of 0 0.5. And this is 2 over L, so I need a divide node. We'll bring that out, 2 over L. And just to organize this and be able to easily visually see it in the future, I'm going to hold down Shift on the keyboard and then click and drag, which gives us a frame. Now, a frame is a super handy newer tool to the Node Material Editor, which allows you to quickly uh, grab clusters of nodes and organize them and move them around. Uh, so I'm going to change this to BW, just for the ease of the future and being able to find it uh, quickly. And the next thing that we're going to need is the amplitude. Now, the amplitude is a variable that we'll control. That's just going to be a float. I can type today. Uh, we'll grab a float, and we'll change that to amplitude. And we'll give it an initial value of 0.5 as well. And then the next thing is speed. So speed is the distance that the crest of the wave moves forward each second. Uh, it says it's convenient to express the speed as a phase constant of a speed variable multiplied by 2 over L, which we know as W. So let's go grab another float. We're going to call this float speed. We'll give it an initial value of 1. And then we're going to grab a multiply node. And we're going to multiply speed by... 
W. And so now we have the speed phase constant set up. Uh, so actually what I want to do is I want to grab these two nodes and I'm going to sh hold shift again and drag another frame around these and we'll just call this speed as well. Okay, one more bullet point, we need the direction. Now this is the horizontal vector uh, perpendicular to the front of the wave. Basically it's the direction that the wave is traveling and we're giving it a horizontal vector, okay? Now let's bring in, so that means we don't need to account for any verticality with this. We don't need a vector three, we can use a vector two. Okay, and then let's give that, uh, we'll call this, uh, so I'm gonna just call it wind direction because it is the wind that generally pushes the waves. Uh, I know gravity from the moon also, but we'll just call it wind direction. Okay, I'm gonna give it an initial value of uh, one for X and zero for Y. Now I do wanna specify something here uh, that we're gonna get into. Uh, throughout this article, you're gonna see X and Y. Uh, in NVIDIA world referred to for the horizontal direction. In the uh, NVIDIA world, they have a Z up world. So what that means is X and uh, Y are the two horizontal axes and uh, Z is the vertical axis. In the Babylon world, we have a Y up world. Uh, so that means that we have X and Z are our uh, horizontal axes and Y is our vertical axis. So we're gonna need to remember that and translate throughout uh, the, anytime we see that in the GPU gems world, in the NVIDIA world. Okay, so we have our four uh, parameters that we can control, the wavelength, the amplitude, the speed, and then uh, the wind direction, which means now it's time to dive into equation number one. Uh, looks a little intimidating at first, but we'll go through it each step of the way and uh, recreate this here. Let's start by taking the amplitude multiplied by sine. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit and we're gonna put that a little bit further out here. So we have our amplitude and we're going to grab a sine node and then we're gonna multiply those together. Now I can hook up the amplitude to the multiply node. I can't hook up the sine node yet uh, because I need to know what type of uh, value we're talking about uh, before it'll let me connect that to the multiply. So we'll do that in a little bit. So now I have uh, amplitude multiplied by sine. So we can start to look at what's in the parentheses here. Uh, so at first it looks a little intimidating. However, we actually have three of these already set up. We already have a vector for the wind direction, that's D. We already have uh, W, which is the wavelength, two over L. And then we also have a speed phase constant. And so what we can do is all we need to create is get the original X and Z positions. Uh, that's, you know, remember Z and X are the two horizontal vectors for um, the axes, excuse me, for the Babylon world. And then we also need time. So let's start here with time multiplied by the speed phase constant. Let's grab another multiply node, bring it down here and then go get a time node and we're going to multiply these together. We'll zoom in just a little bit here. So time multiplied by speed. Okay, that is this portion here of equation number one. Uh, now let's go through and actually do the this part. Now this is the dot product of the wind direction and the original X and Y, uh, excuse me, X and Z positions. So we're gonna do this by taking a vector splitter and a vector merger node and combining them together in kind of a fun specific way. So we're gonna take this vector four out of the world position and we're gonna say X is X, but remember we want Z and we need it as a vector too. So I don't want X and Y, I actually want X and Z. So what I'm gonna do is take this Z value and I'm gonna pipe it right into the input for Y. So now whatever comes out of this output is actually the values of X and Z, even though it says X and Y. So we'll bring the wind direction up here and then we have a node called dot for the dot product between these two vectors. So we'll bring this in here and this in here, just like that. 
Okay, so now we have the dot product of our direction and our original x and z coordinates. And now we need to multiply that by w. So we'll bring this out here. We're going to multiply the dot product by w. And so now we have time multiplied by the speed phase constant, and we have the dot product of the wind direction and the original x and z coordinates, uh, and then we're multiplied by uh, the wavelength. So the final thing that we need to do is then add those together. So let's grab an add node, and we will connect these up like so. And then, of course, to finish this off, we can connect the add node into the sign and the sign into the final multiply to complete uh, equation number one here. However, you'll notice that it's not hooked up. Our, our plane isn't doing anything. Well, we actually have to go through the, the uh, process of hooking it up. So I'm going to grab a vector merger node. And what I'm going to do, actually, you know what let's do? Let's move this over so it's nice and close to this vector splitter. I'm going to pass uh, three things directly across uh, because we're only changing the uh, vertical position of each single uh, vertice. So we'll take the x uh, across, we'll take z across, and we'll take w across. And then what we're going to do is move this merger node all the way out here, and we'll hook up this output of the equation into y. And then finally take the vector for output and connect that to the world position. And when we release, we see that we have, there we go, a beautiful rolling sine wave. Now, because we created some parameters for this, there's a bunch of things that we can do to change this. So we can go in and change the uh, wavelength of it. Let's say that we want them closer together. Uh, we can also change the uh, amplitude, uh, amplitudes over here. So let's say we want it uh, 0 0.1. And then let's go ahead and say that we want to slow it down just a little bit. And right now, the way I think about the wind direction is I think about we have a value here uh, of uh, 1 in x and 0 in uh, y, in our case z. Uh, the way I think about this uh, is I want 100% of x or I want, and I want 0% of y. Uh, so uh, we can actually, uh, that changes the direction. So let's say for an example that I want 50% of x and 50% of y uh, or z. So now what you get is you get the waves moving uh, in a diagonal direction. And so what you can do is say, basically think of these as the percent or the amount of uh, the direction that you want in X or, uh, or Z. And so that actually concludes the first video of this nine part series. Uh, we're gonna go into each step and I'm super excited for you to come along for this journey with us. I would love to tell you what the end state's gonna be, but you're just gonna have to come along and find out. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you'll enjoy the next ones. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss new videos and we will see you next time. Thanks a lot.